Hello guys and welcome to Jasmine Reviews. As per the title, I will be doing movie reviews, obvs, um, and I think it's appropriate since I just saw it to start with the movie It. Now, I am a huge horror buff, you may or may not know this, um, if you're just tuning in and you don't know me and you haven't watched my channel before, yes, I am in fact a huge horror movie buff. I like all kinds of horror movies and scary stuff, like I'm so into it, it's one of my favorite things, it's surprisingly. <laughs> um, and it all kind of started because I'm just going to give you like a little tidbit. Uh, it all just kind of started because growing up my mom watched every horror movie ever in the history of Everness. And she would either say, oh, well, you guys can go to bed or you can watch it, you know, like if we didn't want to watch it, we were scared. Knowing that we were going to sit up and listen to it and be more scared by the sounds of it. So we ended up watching it and we were like traumatized. Um, you know, of like Freddy and Jason and stuff like that. But now I'm like so into it and I probably will do this forever because I love, I love the horror movies. Anyways, I've always been a giant fan of the original It and Tim Curry's performance was fantastic. Like, yeah, there were things that I would have um, improved upon in the old one, but that will be a part of another episode that I will do for you guys. I thought about doing um, a versus like the old movie versus the new one but after seeing the new movie it is not fair for me to compare this new movie to the old one because and it's exactly this this is the way I feel about it it is not a remake of the old movie it is in fact a interpretation on the book itself so it's like two people read the book and made their own versions of what they saw versus one guy made a movie a long time ago and then somebody else was like, hey, let's redo that and make it, you know, different. There's no, there's no way. There's no correlation. Like, yeah, they tried. They tried to add that in there, but it didn't come across. So let's, let's just move on because that right there would be like, it's not fair. The old one, in my opinion, is obviously, it's got, even though it has its own faults, I still like it better. But the new one is not bad. Like, don't let me discourage anyone from going to see it. If you haven't seen it, please go see it. Um, it is quite nice. Uh, before I jump in, I'm just going to say, yes, there will be spoilers. I'm not going to give away everything, but there will definitely be spoilers. Anyways, let's jump right in. The beginning part is, you know, okay, whatever. You know, it's your typical you know, movie entrance with the movie in the rain and all that great stuff. Whatevs. Let's skip past that. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing right with it. Like, I mean, it's just the beginning, but whatever. We're going to start with Georgie. The beginning scene with Georgie. Now, I will do some comparisons to the old movie, but I'm not comparing this movie to the old movie. I'm just going to say certain things about the old movie that could have possibly improved this new one a little bit. Um, okay, so I do like that the little glass, like, on, because Georgie goes down into the cellar and he thinks that he sees, like, eyes in the dark. I do kind of like the hint that that could have been Pennywise or it could have just been, you know, like the little things on the shelf. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, that was completely different than I would have expected because it's almost like, yeah, if it was Pennywise and he had had that plan to eat Georgie a long time ago. Um, anyways, the kid in the bed, um, Bill. <clears throat> yeah, he stutters and stuff, and yeah, it, it, it felt like it took him a little bit to get into the stuttering thing, which is fine, because if you don't normally stutter, it's kind of hard to make yourself naturally kind of do it, so, you know, that's fine. Um, also, so, you know, Georgie goes out with his bow, and he's, like, chasing it around, and blah, 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 you know, and he hits his head. It's in the trailer, so that's not a huge spoiler, but 
hits his head and the boat gets away from him and then he goes down the drain. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. My number one. All right, my number one, number, number one problem with this movie is the clown itself. I do like it. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the actual idea of the clown. By the end of the movie, I was kind of like, yeah, this isn't so bad. You know, I like the idea of having the clown be kind of scary. However, if I looked into it, like, like if I cared that much, even if, even if I was a kid, like, trust me, I knew stuff when I was a kid. If I look into a sewer drain and I see, like, eyeballs peering at me, and then just, like, the scariest clown in the world comes out of the darkness, because he doesn't look like a nice clown. He doesn't look like one of those ones from a circus. He doesn't look like one of those ones that wouldn't eat you. And obviously, you can tell that Georgie is, like, scared and uncomfortable. I would have done just walked away. I wouldn't have even tried. Like, he might have still tried to eat me, because, you know, he grabs Georgie and pulls him out of there anyway. But, um, it's the whole fact it's the whole fact that he just looks like a demon from the start and I don't really like that however okay so he's having this whole interchange with Georgie and uh, it's not awful like whenever he starts talking about pop, 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 like the popcorn and stuff I actually really like that because it does sound like something a clown would do it sounds like something like a clown would say and he's getting Georgie to like be more open and kind of trust him a little bit more in a slight way but the fact that Georgie is enjoying it so much that he starts laughing and then Pennywise stops laughing and like growls at him and stuff you know whatever that part is a little bit because doesn't Pennywise only pretend to be nice just to get you close enough to talk to him and then he scares you because, you know, you taste better when you're afraid or whatever. We'll get into that in deeper detail later. But Georgie is obviously, like, enjoying himself and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, yeah, that little bit of, that little bit of fear that hits him at the end before he gets eaten would not be enough. Because you could have, it's probably about the same amount as he was feeling before that. So it's stupid for that. And then the old, like, the, like there's a woman outside who sees the kid looking in the drain and she just turns around and like starts doing her other thing I get it that uh, the adults of Derry are like ignoring that something awful is going on but she obviously did it like it didn't seem like she was like oh that's strange and then turned around and did something else like like you know the weird way that they did it in the original movie where the adults just kind of ignored what was happening she just saw him and she was just like oh you know like this is an everyday thing this is normal it's just a kid looking down in the drain and that's stupid because any old person ever would at least say something you know they would at least say something or like or pay more attention because then like whatever okay so that's just my first th issue but if it is in fact the whole like adults are ignoring that something awful is happening then I can understand why she did the things that she did kind of but uh, they should have made it more obvious and creepy. Um, and then when Pennywise, okay, Pennywise, you know, bites off Georgie's arm. Well, Georgie's just like, ah, ah, and like trying to crawl away. Okay, look, I, I get that the kid would try to escape. But I don't know any child ever that wouldn't just be like screaming bloody murder. If, like, I like I used to slam my finger in the door or get, like, a paper cut, and I'd be like, ah! like, it was the end of the world. Why didn't this kid, like, start just screaming his head off, like, loud, loud enough to everybody to hear? He's just like, ah, no, you know. But other than that, like, the scene itself was okay. Like, I can get why there's certain ways things happen, so it wasn't awful. Um, these are merely just constructive criticisms more than just me coming down on the movie because at first whenever I first saw the movie's trailer I was so ready to just come down as hard as I could on this movie because I was so angry about how they did Pennywise but now that I've seen the movie it's not it's not the worst thing I've ever seen before now moving on from that the kid what's his name Richie the one with the glasses who tells all the jokes and everything He's my second issue. 
he seems like a nice kid and everything and like the jokes are okay but it seems random and like not at all as funny as you know they're wanting him to be like even if it's supposed to be that his jokes aren't necessarily funny they're so unfunny that it's like maybe they didn't properly tell the joke in the way that it was supposed to be that nobody in the movie thinks it's funny you know because and they're random they're not like it's like he tells them at the most random times when you wouldn't think that he would tell them also you can tell that this kid probably doesn't cuss in real life which is fine like i'm not promoting cussing in children however you can tell because when he cusses so much during the movie but it's so unnatural like it's stilted and like like it's almost like whenever you first learn how to cuss and say cuss words and use them properly it sounds so strange and so weird and you you don't quite I don't know you don't quite get how to get them to flow just right I feel like he's suffering from that through the whole movie not once does it's almost like it's almost like he's afraid that he's gonna get in trouble for cussing every time he's about to do it so he stops and then cusses like not that he actually stops but it, it's almost like he's like second thinking it in his head and so whenever he cusses it comes out weird um, so I didn't care for that I mean if you notice the bullies the bullies cuss freely and well but yeah that's kind of my big problem with uh, Richie's character um, and I was kind of disappointed that um, that the like I know that the Ian Haler did have a lot of parts in the movie um, <clears throat> sorry but I wish it would have played a, a, a larger importance in that kid's life because instead of the kid believing that his medicine was so important to him like he was just like a like a germaphobe like oh I don't want to touch that blah 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 but he wasn't like man if I don't have this I'm gonna die like in the original film you believe that this kid actually has asthma and needs it in this one you're just like yeah maybe he doesn't you know whatever like it may be because I've seen the original so I know he doesn't actually have it but um, he doesn't even act like he actually serious about the medicine um, and if he was as weird about his medicine as he was whenever he dropped all his pills on the ground he wouldn't have gone and picked them back up off the ground he would have just freaked out about the fact they were on the ground because it's the ground it's supposed to be dirty isn't it but whatevs um and then the, the um the library scene was okay um whenever uh he's following the eggs and he gets down there into the stacks and he gets chased by the headless thing the way that the headless thing moves though is a little unrealistic like it's kind of scary because it's jilted so it's almost like it's almost like someone put a stop motion person following you so it's like jilted and like weird but it's just moving way too fake for me to be like oh yeah this is a fantastic thing no it's more like eh. you know like I wasn't exactly afraid by it um and then uh, Beverly Beverly's character I do like the fact that they kind of had like the innuendos there about her home life and stuff but where does this female bully come from she's not even like a thing in the like well I mean she might be in the book trust me she may be a thing in the book but if she's really as big of a bully as she is with her little gang like like really like why why even have her be anything in the movie like she could have been left out of the movie altogether and I wouldn't have even cared you know but uh I get like the the thing about the children's home lives it's like we whenever the movie even starts halfway through the movie I still don't even know who everybody is because they just gloss over they gloss over everybody's character like that 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 you just see their faces and then we're supposed to care about the fact that they're going through these things at home and they don't even show enough at the homestead like they don't even show enough of their actual personal lives for me to care so it's like oh she might be um having a hard life because her dad is you know 
doing things that he shouldn't be uh, with her, you know, like that he uh, gets hinted at that there's like an incest, like an incestuous abuse going on, and um, but it's so lightly touched on with every subject, like even um, can't even remember his name now, but the little kid with the inhaler, even his mother, uh, with all of her like obsessions with him taking his medicine and stuff it's barely touched on like you only see her like three times in the whole movie and you never ever see bill's parents except for the one time whenever you see his dad like get mad because oh you took stuff from my office like i thought that you were gonna get like more of a, a feeling you know like especially since it's only the young kids um, adventure in this movie. It's not them remembering it. It's just their young selves going through it. That gave you so much of an opportunity to really embellish their actual stories so that I would care about these people, so that I could be like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for you, or I, I hate you, you know, or like, whatever. And you actually kind of feel sorry for, um, what is it, uh, Henry Bowers, because his dad is a jerk and you you feel bad for him but it's almost like it's almost like you start rooting for him like instead of anything else you almost start rooting for him i don't like the scene where he kills his father only because i feel like it could have been a little bit more violent because if you're about to kill your father like yeah you might hesitate for it but if if you're if you're psychotic or on the brink of being psychotic anyway and you've had to deal with torture, like, blah, like, everything, every day of your life, just abuse, torture, like, getting shot at, you know, getting uh, made fun of in front of your friends, like, all that kind of stuff, enough to where you decide that you want to try and kill your family or your parents. I feel like it could have been, like, much more, like, insane, like, like, I don't know, strange and weird instead of just, like, the, like, ah, you know, whatever. Um, also, also, though... Uh, Patrick Hockstetter, he was such a major character. He was a major, major character in the book and in the original series. He was a huge character to the series. Um, and he's the most psychotic of all of them because he believes that he is the only real person in life. Like, he believes everybody else is made up. He killed his own little brother. Like tell me that you're non-psychotic and then you're like the, in the movie you just think that he's like the bully like not like he's like a no-name bully and he just dies immediately I didn't even know who that was until they posted the picture of him after he went missing I didn't even know who it was how bad is that that's awful and um the fact that uh I didn't even know the other two's name. Like, I knew the Belger because obviously he belches. Blah. He burps. Yeah, I gotcha. But, like, then there's, like, that blonde kid, the Draco Malfoy looking kid, who doesn't even have any lines, I don't think. Who is that guy? Why is he even there? Like, and, like, I feel like in the original movie and in the books, the bullies were much more prevalent. It wasn't like, oh, they just jump by and then they do something really bad and then they leave. It was like a serious, serious thing. And I know I'm jumping all over the movie here, but, uh, like, in different places of the movie. But it, it just got to me to a point where I'm just like, eh. You know? Because I, I don't know. I do like, okay, they, um, that TV program with the kids and, like, the teacher, like, you know, she keeps, oh, they all float down here. Yeah, do you want to go down with the clown in the sewers? Like, and stuff like that. Like, in Beverly's house, it was more subtle. I wish, like, yeah, they did add it in to the Henry Bowers killing his father scene. And if they wouldn't have, like, if they would have just had it, like, even if she had said the same things, like, yeah, kill your father, whatever. But they didn't show her and then show Pennywise, like, on there, too. It would have been much more of, like... Oh, it would have been like a mind, I don't know, like a, like, um, it would just mess with your mind. I'm trying not to cuss. 
it would just like mess with your mind in such a way because you would have heard her saying, yeah, kill it, do it, Henry, join us. They all float down here or whatever. Like you would have heard her saying that stuff, but you wouldn't have seen it. You would have just seen like glimpses of the TV every once in a while, but they like zoom in and focus on it. And then the teacher walks away and there's Pennywise. Uh, don't like that too. Um, also they gave Pennywise too many chances to eat the kids. Like, I, I get the whole psychologically messing with them and making them afraid, but they gave him way too many chances to actually eat the kids where he didn't eat the kids or didn't even try to eat the kids. Like, I get it. They taste, uh, they taste way better when they're afraid. That's a thing. But you can still eat people when they're not afraid. That's a thing that he has done. He's eaten people when they're not super afraid. But, it, like, when they're in the house, he had so many opportunities. When they were in the sewer, he had so many opportunities. When they were anywhere in the world, whenever uh, he was getting attacked by the, that painting, whenever they were separated, he had so many opportunities to, to, like, eat these kids. And it's such a shock to me because it's like, why didn't he eat the kids and or... Why did he have so many opportunities to be with them alone if that wasn't his intention to eat the kids? Also, also, um, what was it? Uh, he shows up in the most random times. Like whenever the, the, um, um, like whenever the kid, Mike Hanlon, uh, had, well, like he was out there getting beat up by Henry Bowers and everybody and they were shoving his face trying to make him eat that meat. Um, and then it shows up and starts waving. Cool scene, you know, fun, whatever. But why was he even there? Like, and if you're getting beat up by bullies and they're, you're about to eat, like, raw meat and you see a clown, would you focus on the fact that there was a clown there? Like, my first thought would be, like, maybe I'm seeing things because I'm getting beat up or whatever. My first thought wouldn't, like, and then it would be, like, why is there a clown there? Like, it wouldn't be, there's a clown, I have to get away and run away from it. Like, even if he was eating what he was eating, because he was eating the arm, like, like it, it just made no sense for him to be there. Because it wasn't like he was alone, you know, and, like, saw the clown and everything. And then, like, instead of there actually being, like, a nice quarry or something like a rock quarry where there was just, like, loads and loads of, uh gravel and stuff for them to have their rock fight. Sorry, I got a huge headache just now. Um, they all just have it over that part of the river all the time. And then whenever they hit Henry, instead of him turning around and being like, you're dead, you're dead, like, you know, like he does, you know, before in the original one, or at least getting away, he just lays there on the ground. You feel so bad for him. And then you're going to have the old Richie with the glasses try and, like, tell him to go, like, you know, blow his dad or whatever. Sorry for my language. But that's like, okay. Did you did you have to say exactly that phrase? Like it makes me it makes me dislike most of the people in the in the losers club more than the bullies. And I mean, I'm sure that maybe they were trying to get you to sympathize with the uh, the bullies just a little bit, but they made us sympathize way too much. Like it should be, oh well, I'm a bully, but you don't realize that I'm psychotic just yet. But it also should be like, hey, we don't deserve to be picked on, but if we're going to, like, insult you, it shouldn't always be such a huge insult. I was born in the 80s, and I grew up through the 90s and everything like that, and my brothers lived through the 80s. We didn't ever say stuff like that. We didn't ever even act like that. Also, I didn't have a huge issue with it, it wasn't a giant issue, but this is in the 80s. Why, why when they went swimming, why aren't they in like swimming trunks? Why were they all in their underwear? Were they just not supposed to be there? Like if they were to say they're going swimming where their parents would be like, nah, nah, we don't want you swimming. Like they were all in their underwear, every one of them. Like I could see if maybe one or two of them were because they didn't realize they were going to go swimming, but every single one of those kids were in their underwear and they like, were like the same underwear. Like they all wore the exact same tidy whities They weren't in like boxers or different colors. 
Nevin? Was the 80s just so bland that that's what you did? Like, <laughs> I feel like that's a lie. I feel like they had swimming trunks back then. Um, I mean, they knew they were going there. Like, even if their parents didn't, they snuck out of the house with everything else. Anyways, uh, that's not a huge thing. It was just a thing that I was wondering. Uh, I also don't like how embellished Beverly and Bill's relationship gets because even if they kissed way back when, she when she's an adult, she still chooses Chubbs McGee. And I know that's not his name, but I'm going to call him that because it makes me happy. Um, no, it doesn't. It like, <laughs> that's, that sounds so mean. I don't mean for it to sound as mean as it does. Um... Anyways, like, she chooses him. I, I, okay, this is part, it's, it's at the end of the movie, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it now because I'm talking about it. It makes me very upset that Beverly found out about who wrote the poem while she was still a child. I think that should have been something that they said when she was an adult, like they, like they did in the original movie, because in the original movie, she went her entire life not knowing who wrote that poem. And then when she comes back and she realizes finally, oh, it was you. That's something meaningful. To find out that when, when you're still a kid of who wrote it, it's just irritating. It's just irritating. Like, I know that you can't have everything be the same, but you should at least have some things be similar or at least better revealed. And uh, when Beverly's in the bathroom and all the blood comes up from the sink, I know that she cut her hair over the sink. I got it. BT dubs, anybody who's ever cut hair ever knows that sinks don't work like that. You can't just wash giant gobs of your hair down the sink. That's not how it works. It's going to get trapped in there and it's going to start overflowing immediately. You're stupid. You're stupid for trying to make me believe that all that hair went down the sink. Get out of here. Get out of my face. I don't want to see you anymore. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, and then uh like all that hair it comes back out and grabs her i don't like that either because it the only thing that made me think of is oh look they just pulled some grudge stuff you know where there's just like hair appearing from nowhere and it's all long and like it moves independent you know of its own you know volition and like it's just stupid they should have just left that a part of the past and just had her look down there and do that also okay i might be wrong because, I mean, her dad is, like, a janitor or whatever, even though that's not discussed too much. Uh, like, how long do tape, uh, tape measures get? Like, they don't get that long, do they? Like, whenever she's measuring that drain, it looks like she's going forever. Like, it looks like, it looks like she's making that thing, like like 20 feet down it's what it looks like I don't think it goes that far like the most I've ever seen has been like almost almost a little bit taller than me which might be like the basic ones like I'm saying he might have like uh, like a work one that goes further but I don't know still stupid that you would even try to measure it also if she knew that the the postcard that she was gonna read was gonna be bad then I can see her hiding but if she didn't know that the postcard she was going to read was going to be bad, why would you run into the bathroom and close the door and then read it in the, in the bathtub? I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting like specific here and I should probably stop because that's just me being nitpicky a little bit. Um, also, um, they missed a huge opportunity in this movie. They could have done so much in this movie. They missed um, an opportunity with, let me see, with the um, the walkie-talkie. Because, you know, as you know, like, Georgie, whenever he went missing, he had the walkie-talkie on him. I thought maybe uh, Bill would have heard the attack happen um, or something. You know, like, because he had the walkie-talkie, but no. Anyways, they could have had... Bill hear the walkie-talkie going off and it's saying like you know hey Bill you know 
Like, you'll blow too, or anything. Help me, Bill. Like, the walkie-talkie is such a huge missed opportunity. Yeah, it's a cliche and everything else, but why even focus on the fact that he had the walkie-talkie at all if you're not at least going to try and make him, like, call you on the walkie-talkie after he's already dead? Like, come on. That would have been fantastic. Like, that would have been so scary. I will applaud the movie for, because I had forgotten about it by the end of the movie, but whenever the the grandpa is talking to Mike Hanlon about, oh, somebody's going to have that gun pointed to your head, I thought maybe they were going to have, like, a gun gun, like, you know, one of the bullies was going to have, like, an actual gun pointed to his head, and I was like, if they do that, I'm going to send them for that, but they didn't. They actually got, like, the actual gun at the end of the movie, and I was like, ah, oh, that's clever, that's real clever, I kind of like that, plus that gun, seeing as how it only had the one in it, I could see, whenever he dropped the, the rest of the ammo down the well, I could see that being the slingshot from the original one with the silver, I got you, I saw what you did there, and I appreciate it, congrats, that was clever, I don't like how, whenever he pushed Henry down the well it was so like it, I don't know if it was CGI but it looked very CGI like he just slams down there and like do 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 nobody no, like not no human can push you that hard to where you would just slam and ping pong your way down like yeah the initial fall might cause you to do that but you would not just get shot across the room like the Hulk slammed you down there like I feel like that's what happened it was like dun, 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 dun. you know Still, still, I think that the kiss to wake up Beverly was stupid. Oh my gosh. Like, maybe if they had all kissed Beverly, like, because you know that there's that scene that they didn't add into the movie because it was so controversial and everybody's talking about how they didn't add it into the movie. Maybe if they had all, like, kissed Beverly to wake her up, you know? Even if they all did it at the same time, like on her hands or whatever, or gave her a hug at the same time, their belief together saved her. You know, that could have been something there that was like a nod to it, you know, like like a nod to the, the fact that they're so close between all of them. But they just had the one guy kiss him like it's true love's kiss or something stupid. And then she, wokes, then she wakes up, she wakes up, she wakes up, and then like repeats the poem to him. And I'm like, you're so stupid. Like, that's the cheesiest thing. Like, it's so cheesy. It's like they made this movie in the 80s, and then they thought, oh, that's a great idea. Except 90% except of the 80s movies were better than this. Like, that's, a, <laughs> that's how I feel. I'm sorry. Okay. Also, I get that, like, whenever he held the gun, and they were like, oh, there's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. And he pulls it anyway, and it cracks in its head. It would have been nice to see his face get kind of disfigured like the original movie showed whenever they hit him with the rock. Uh... Because that would be, um, really, uh, interesting to see. Um, plus, if he believed that there was a thing in there, or that by him pulling that would work, even though they were shouting that there was no ammo in it, then it should have worked. Because he wasn't afraid anymore, right? Okay, and it should have eaten Beverly. It should have eaten Beverly, it should have eaten, uh... Stanley, it should have eaten both of them because he already had his mouth around his entire face. Uh, you know, I mean, just saying, like, not based off of actually what happened in the books and in the original series, just because he was there and just because Beverly wasn't afraid he's not going to eat her. It's not that if I'm, if you're not afraid of me, I can't eat you. It's, if you're afraid of me, you taste better. That's what he always used to say. Like, if so, if you're not, a, so if everybody in that town just stopped being afraid of it, he wouldn't have any power anymore. He'd have to go to another town, probably. Like, what? What? Where did? Where does the story take off? Where does this happen? Like, how? How are you possibly, possibly going through this? Because you could just train your kid at a very young age to not be afraid. I mean, yeah, it's hard to not be afraid, but people do it. You can train yourself to not be afraid. And then nobody would ever be able to eat anymore. He, he, would, he would have to starve to death every year. Or not every year, but, you know, every time he came back. So, stupid. And his power comes from fear. So even if, so if you're, like, 
because when they're fighting him, he's still really strong, and he's, like, knocking the kids around and everything, but his power comes from fear. If he's actually, if you're not afraid of him, then he can't hurt you anymore. Like, right? Like, that's the thing. Like, or if, like, I mean, it's like it's conflicting against itself. Like, yeah, he could still eat you if you're not afraid, you know, and you're by yourself. But, like, if it's a group of them and none of them are afraid of you and you're going to fight them, he can't actually, like, physically hurt you. Like, it's stupid. Sorry, it's not stupid. It's just, it's illogical. Um, and I noticed that, like, while they were fighting, it used, like, some Harry Potter boggart technique, like, uh... Like, yeah, like, technology. Like, he was just turning into each thing that they feared the most, like, as they were hitting him. So, it's like, they should have just been, like, ridiculous and turned it back into a clown because that's what would have happened. Because that's exactly what the Boggart does, isn't it? It just changes into what you're afraid of. And then you go ridiculous. And then he switches. It's ridiculous. His class is ridiculous. Anyways. <sighs> I mean, see, even Harry Potter knows if you're not afraid of it anymore, it can't hurt you. Stupid. Um, and it, ch like, it changing in to Beverly's dad after she smashed him in the face with the back of the toilet seat, which I'm assuming that's what it was, but she smashed him in the face, and it knew that that was there, because remember the kid came through, he was still on the ground bleeding, okay? So... For him to think that he could change into her father and her, like, all of a sudden be afraid of him? Bull. He knew that she was going to kill him after he said that. Because why wouldn't she? Like, she is not afraid of her father anymore, obviously. Like, it didn't seem like, to be honest, it did not seem like she was ever afraid of her father. It just seemed like she was always uncomfortable around him and didn't want to talk to him because of the things that he had done to her. It seemed like she didn't like him. Like she didn't have a good relationship. But it, not once, not one time did I ever feel like she was actually afraid of her father. Not once. Not one single time. Except for like, yeah, she ran through the house because he was coming after her. But anybody would do that. I mean, come on. So that should have been embellished a little bit more. Because if I had known that she was actually terrified of her father, then I could see why it would change into that. But he didn't, you know, whatever. So that was a bad idea. And it's not meant to be between her and Bill. I already said that, but it's not meant to be. So why even have him run after her to kiss her before she leaves? It's a little upsetting to me. I don't care for it. Um, I will applaud the way that they leave the circle after making the blood oath. That is super, super clever. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you have not either seen the original or read the book and you need to look that up immediately because the order in which they leave the circle is super important and I think that is so clever that is clever like oh man like whenever I like I had read about it so I knew that I was looking uh for something but I didn't really remember what I'd read I just remembered they said it was important about the way they leave the circle or whatever so whenever I was watching the movie and I saw it I immediately started like I like I actually clapped a little bit to myself I was like gosh that is so good like director director good on you that was really clever that was super super clever and I am so proud of you for doing that that is absolutely great um anyways uh also 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 this has happened before this happened way back when um, well, not way back when, but whatever. Having the uh, bully fight Mike Hanlon, having Henry and Mike fight as kids, clever, clever, clever. You are a clever girl or man, whatever. I just got super dizzy. Wow. But that was really clever because, um... They, because if you've seen the old movie and you've read the book, you know that they do that again when they get older. Like, Henry Bowers stabs Mike Hanlon. So I was like, oh, that's clever. It's almost like payback. Like, you killed me, now I'm going to kill you, even though killed, you know, didn't really work out in either of their favor. 
uh, who knows what they're gonna do in the new movie, but still, uh, but yeah, like, overall, it was a pretty good movie, I, there were certain parts that maybe I would have changed, see, um, don't, don't assume, please, that I'm just coming down on the movie about all the bad things that I would have changed, because there was a lot of really smart things. I don't know if you guys noticed, but whenever the Richie, because he's afraid of clowns, whenever he got separated in the house, there actually is, if not two, it might be the same doll, but it looks different from the different angles. They have a doll that literally is a nod to the original Tim Curry's Pennywise, and it's so cleverly done. I like that a lot. That's really smart. Um, I really wish they would have done something with the walkie-talkie. That would have been great, but please, like, don't think I'm just coming down on this movie. It's actually really good. I'm only going to give it... I was going to say, like, our, my original rating was like a B plus, but I think an A minus would suffice. I'm not going to give it an A or an A plus because I think the original movie was like an A and this movie was an A minus only only because there's not a lot of things wrong with it but the things that are wrong with it are so wrong that it makes up for the things that it didn't have wrong with it in the other places like like the kid um Eddie that's what his name was I've been I've not known his name the entire time I've been making this Eddie cuz he has like the inhaler whenever he like walks in front of the house and, um, you know, drops all his pills on the ground, and the leper picks up his stuff. It just looked really bad. Like, it looked like something from, like, a Goosebumps movie. Like, they, like, like they added, like, one of the actual monsters from a Goosebumps movie to chase him into the back. Now, Pennywise being in the back was cool. I don't necessarily like, um, uh, the, most of the stuff happened in that house, because, the house that originally was, like, haunted in the original one was Beverly's house. Like, after she came back, you know, her house had been, like, dilapidated and stuff. Like, it was the one that she used to live in. And, uh, I just don't know if I feel okay with everything happening in that one house and nobody lives there and they've never burnt it down or anything. Like, come on. Do something. Don't just leave, like, a terrible little house in the middle of nowhere. Um... Also, uh, another point before I wrap all this up. How long were they in Beverly's house? Because, yeah, you left someone outside to be like a watch, like a watchdog almost. But that's another issue I have with how come, like, they, why did they use so much blood in that scene? There's no way, there's absolutely no way that they got all of that blood. I don't care how many, I don't care how much you want to fight with me over this. There's no way they got all of that blood cleaned up in a couple of hours. It probably took way too long, like a lot of hours. It, it took a long time for them to clean that up. I know it did. There's no possible way because blood is super hard to clean up anyway. And if it's been there a while, then yeah, yeah, you know, that's ridiculous. And what I really liked about the original movie that I didn't really care about for this one is after they clean up the blood, and Beverly turns, or like, like Beverly herself cleans up the blood, and she turns around, she can hear it laughing, and the blood is all back again. I wish that would have happened. That would have been really cool. I like that. I mean, I do like the fact that she looked over and saw a drop of blood. That was kind of cool. You know. But yes, I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of really good things in this movie. I really did like it. I'll probably buy it when it comes out on DVD, just saying. Um, I didn't hate it. And Pennywise, as, as much of a problem as I have with him looking kind of like a demon as the clown himself, and his gigantic forehead, his forehead is so big it's bigger than mine. Like, there's a problem with that. But, as much as I have a problem with that, I actually really liked him. Like, that was a really good clown. Um... And there's actually one point, I can't remember what he says or what he's doing, but he actually does kind of sound like the original Tim Curry whenever he says something about, like, like as the clown, he says something. And it's so cool. 
Like, I really wish he would have tried to give uh, Georgie a balloon. Like, I feel like the balloons didn't have nearly as much of a prevalence. Now that I've said it, now that I've said it, I, I both applaud and sin this exact same scene. Whenever he's always saying, oh, they all float down here. I like that because, like, I mean, it's a sewer and everything like that, but it's cool because he talks about the balloons and they float and everything like that. In the original movie, you just think about, you know, people floating in the water or, like, crap or, like, balloons floating in the water. Like, he's trying to get you to come down there. In this one, in this one, it's so clever because whenever you see in the deadlights, you know, they, they, the kids all look up and they saw all those kids floating because they're floating. They're, like, suspended. Okay, yeah, it's not, like, mind-blowing the way I'm making it sound, but it is cool because, like, you just see them and you don't even, it doesn't even register in your mind that they're floating. You just see them up there rotating. But then whenever they come down, like, oh, they're, they're all floating down. Yeah, they're floating. But I also have to send that part because why did the kids see it then? Why did they just now, like, why did they see that then? Because now that it is dead, they should be able to wake up all of those kids and save them. So wouldn't that make them super famous? And, oh, you saved all these kids from being dead or all those kids actually dead and they didn't tell anybody about it. Like, please tell me, like, what? What happened with that? Like, did you, they just land in the water and you just left them there and was like, ah, forget about it. They'll be fine. I mean, come on. But still cool. I mean, anyways, um, that is it for my review of it. I hope that you guys um, have enjoyed this. Are there points that you guys agree with me on? Are there points that you guys want to rebuttal? I'm actually really excited in hearing other people's opinions on this movie because I'm not like in the place where, even though I've said it, but I'm not in the place where I'm like, yes, I'm right and you're wrong. That's not me at all. I just have my own opinion on it because I want to be afraid whenever I watch a movie and if I see something that looks scary, I'm not immediately going to be like, okay, well I'm just going to go talk to this super scary looking clown, you know, like, but if you see like a super happy, super nice clown like Tim Curry's version, like even though there's something off-putting about it, like Tim Curry had those like weird like blue lines through the eye that made it look like they were like demon eyes almost like that was so off-putting for me I didn't like I didn't mind clowns unless they had that if they had those weird lines I wouldn't even go near them because I was so sure that that was like the scariest thing in the world to me and I, my, my mom told me that I was like petrified of those so yeah I mean I could go to the circus I could talk to clowns anything unless you had that kind of makeup like if your makeup looks a little bit off-putting I can't talk to you about it like I, like you have to stay away now I'm fine because it takes a lot to scare me now uh, anyways please uh, leave your comments down below I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say um, what should I do next as my next movie review um, are there points that I missed? I can make any other videos of like extras if there's something that maybe you guys would like me to talk about. Uh, anyways, um, please like and subscribe and comment. And for more things that I've done, you can click on any of the links in the description. And I love you guys and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye guys!